They call this the flow country, a stunning, lonely world of peat and moss, a patchwork of land and water that covers over 4,000 square kilometres of the far north of Scotland. I've heard it said that to really appreciate it, you simply have to see it from above. It's hoped that this area will soon become a UNESCO World Heritage Site, like the Great Barrier Reef or the Central Amazon Rainforest. These boglands also have impeccable environmental credentials. They're one of the most powerful natural storage systems for carbon in the world, which puts the flow country on the front line of the fight against climate change. It's a remarkable place. At first glance, this isolated spot doesn't look like somewhere you'd come to talk about travel, transport or connection. In fact, it might be somewhere you'd come to talk about the lack of them. But believe me, that's all set to change because this empty stretch of moorland is about to become a spaceport. If all goes to plan, beginning in the early 2020s, a maximum of 12 rockets a year will be launched from the empty and isolated Moyen Peninsula. They'll carry satellites used for mapping and monitoring the weather. The major investor is Highlands and Islands Enterprise. Roy Kirk is project director. So Roy, why is the Moyen Peninsula the perfect place for a, a spaceport? It's all about geography. We're really close to the Atlantic Ocean, about five kilometres from the launch pad. And of course, it's not really heavily inhabited. I've driven up here through the flow country, this fantastic carbon sink, peat and bog. People are worried about the impact of the spaceport on that landscape. What's your response to that? So we understand that. We are super supportive as an organisation of the World Heritage Status bid for the flow country. Um, in working with the crofters, it's been very clear this is their home. We want to make sure the environment is protected and actually enhanced. The project's green credentials have been criticised robustly by opponents of the scheme. But the landowners, local crofters, are largely in favour of the development. Dorothy Pritchard is the chairperson for the Melness Crofters Estate. The majority are for it, and a lot of the young people in the area are for it, but we took a ballot. There, are, there is an objection group, Protect the Mowing, and we got a majority vote in that ballot, so we decided that's it. We've got to go ahead from our members, and they would like us to proceed, so we proceeded with it. And if it goes ahead, mm -hmm. what's it going to mean for the area? Well, jobs. I mean, we have a, an ageing population here. Um, we're, this area is totally really reliant on tourism and service industries and tourism is a seasonal, seasonal employment and low paid employment and it's not retaining our young people. So we really need to sort of embrace some sort of industries that's going to offer long term well paid employment and that's really at the heart of it. We want to have young families here and we want them to retain our young people that are local people as well. Do you think there's a perception that this isn't the sort of thing that crofters should be doing? Yes. Yeah, and there's a sort of perception that crofters are sort of stupid in some way or that we're ignorant in some way, but I can assure you some fantastically well-educated people have come out of this little village itself. So don't underestimate crofters. So it's just <laughs> another part in the story another of how crofters the story, manage yeah. their land? Yep. Yeah. So you're a, a crofter who's boldly <laughs> going where no crofters gone before? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> And if the launch pad isn't quite built, well, I'm going to have to make my own. Supposedly, it'll be 10 metres square, and so will mine. Though, I suspect my space age components are a little cheaper. And finally, I'm right there, in the very square that could connect Scotland to outer space. You know, it's exciting just how Scottish a story this is. Outside of the United States, the city that makes the most satellites in the world is Glasgow. The rockets that will be used here are being manufactured in forests just east of Inverness. In the past, Scotland was famous around the world for building ships, 
In the future, could it be famous for building and launching spaceships? And with the launch pad complete, there's only one thing remaining. Retire to a safe distance and... Begin the countdown. Three, two, one. Parts of that launch may not actually have happened, but won't it be incredible when it does? When Scotland crosses Connection's final frontier and makes that ultimate link beyond our own world to outer space. <laughs>